Hi, this is Mubashir Mansour connecting to you from the Istanbul Technical University. It's a great pleasure to be presenting some of our latest research on the cause of brown color in as grown CVD diamond here at the NanoSmat conference. Let's first begin with a bird's eye view of the problem at hand. When diamond crystals are grown under chemical vapor deposition, it is very common to see an undesirable brownish coloration in the as grown material. Once such diamonds are subjected to low pressure, high temperature or high pressure, high temperature heat treatments, this brown color disappears. Interestingly, temperatures of over 1600 Celsius have been widely reported to cause a significant reduction in the intensity of this color. And heat treatments can even make such crystals completely colorless. Here's an absorption spectra of the as grown and heated CVD brown diamonds. It is interesting to note that this spectra is mostly featureless with three bands at around 510, 350, and 270 nanometers. There is also a continuum across the visible spectrum with decreasing intensity towards the longer wavelengths. This is believed to be the main cause of the brownish color. But once heat treatment is done, the intensity of all these bands and the continuum decreases very significantly, sometimes by one order of magnitude or more, which then in turn makes the crystal completely colorless. Heat treatments of diamond are a very interesting topic, and uh, interested researchers who wish to learn more about this topic uh, are highly recommended to refer to this book shown here. There can be many reasons for the cause of brown color in diamond, and several comprehensive reviews have already been written on this subject, which are shown here. However, the brown color in as grown CVD diamond is a special case, and unlike any other. The defects which are causing it are also subject to much debate. Before we proceed, let's first look at the diamond synthesis process in a CVD chamber. The reactants are usually methane and hydrogen gas, and the reaction takes place under a hydrogen plasma. Microwave plasma is very effective in forming considerable concentrations of atomic hydrogen, which is a crucial driving force in the reaction pathway towards elemental carbon. One of the most desirable reaction pathways is actually shown here through the methyl radicals. However, this is not the only possible pathway in a CVD chamber. We always want the diamond to grow as fast as possible. So one of the frontiers in the diamond synthesis research is the growth rate. When we look at the literature in this regard, it is very well established that if trace concentrations of nitrogen gas are added into the chamber, then it is possible to increase the growth rate by several times. So it has become quite a routine practice to purge and trace quantities of nitrogen gas into the chamber during growth. Now, looking back at the reactants, we always have some nitrogen and hydrogen atoms which are unintentionally doped into the diamond crystals which are grown under these conditions. Now, there are two main theories as to why they turn brown. The first theory is that there are these large vacancy clusters which are 70 atoms or so in diameter. That is 0.7 to 1 nanometer size range, which cause this brown continuum. These are quite large defects, and computational studies on the formation energies of such clusters estimates its formation to require over 100 electron volts of energy, which means from a thermodynamic point of view, they're quite expensive, energetically speaking. But it is said that perhaps due to the fast growth rates in the CVD chamber, these clusters form under non-equilibrium conditions and therefore disappear during the heat treatment. Interestingly, it has been calculated that the energy required to form an isolated vacancy in diamond is actually higher than the energy required to add one atomic vacancy to a vacancy cluster. And for this reason, they have rightfully stated that this would lead to vacancy cluster formation. The problem is, when we consider heat treatments where thermodynamic activity of vacancy increases with temperature, why should these defects dissolve into the lattice or disappear? If anything, we should even see more aggregation of vacancies. Perhaps this is why maybe the voidites occur in diamonds which are treated at ultra-high temperatures. Maybe. It is also said that maybe the size of a vacancy cluster is crucial. In fact, Diffraction-related models have been used to demonstrate that a 40 to 70 atom vacancy cluster size can cause a brown continuum in the vacancy cluster through diffraction and scattering-related phenomena. And perhaps 
Further growth of these clusters during heat treatments removes this brown continuum from the spectrum. A possibility which is definitely worth further studies. However, such diffraction-related models fail to predict the experimentally observed bands at 270, 350, and 510 nanometers. There is also an interesting observation that vacancy clusters can be seen under transmission electron microscopes. However, such studies have not been conducted on a statistically significant number of samples. And the cause and effect between the brown color and the vacancy cluster, even if they exist, has not been very well established. So we move on to the next theory, which is based on nitrogen-related point defects. Because of the issues with the vacancy cluster theory and the recent experimental insights, which we will talk about very shortly, we have investigated if nitrogen-related point defects could be the cause of the brownish coloration through ab initio calculations on substitutional nitrogen defect and NVH defect complexes. The reason for our interest in the C-Center, which is another name for the single substitutional nitrogen, comes from a brilliant paper published last year by Professor Zaitsev in collaboration with the Gemological Institute of America. They have grown a diamond crystal in a CVD chamber under various nitrogen partial pressures. The first layer seen here was grown under the lowest partial pressure of nitrogen, and the sixth layer shows the highest nitrogen partial pressure. They have demonstrated a direct correlation between the intensity of brown color and the concentration of the C-center in as-grown CVD diamond. This is very exciting because it could mean that nitrogen-related point defects are at play here. When we dig deeper into the surface equilibria in a hydrogen-terminated diamond, the amazing paper by Feng published in 2014 actually gives a very good picture of what is going on. Let's not forget that surfaces are a completely different world. Synthesis of the diamond is occurring on the surface. When defects which form on the surface are considered, they too are a completely different world. When we compare them with the defect equilibria uh, with respect to bulk, one should not expect much resemblance between the defects in the surface and defects in the bulk. And especially in the low temperature synthesis conditions of a CVD diamond, it is the surface defects which are trapped in the bulk. So when we look at the equilibria and defect formation energies of the surfaces during growth, single substitutional nitrogen and the NVH complexes are very dominant. This is in direct agreement with the experimentally observed equilibria of as-grown CVD diamonds. But once the reaction front progresses further, and the crystal is growing, these surface defects become entrapped in the bulk, and the defect thermodynamics changes as well. However, there isn't enough thermal energy for those different defect states to actually change and equilibrate with the new thermodynamic equilibrium. So none of these defects are necessarily stable. We will come back to this topic in a bit. Considering the fact that C defects concentration was found to be correlated with the brown color's intensity by Professor Zaitsev, we thought to revisit the single substitutional nitrogen and plot configuration coordinate diagrams associated with this defect. We used spin polarized uh, hybrid functional calculations with a supercell size of 216 atoms under periodic boundary conditions and used the non rad code developed by the Van der Waal Research Group for finding any radiative or non radiative transitions this defect can have. It turns out that in addition to the 270 nanometer peak, which is well established to be associated with this defect, there is an additional transition at 350 nanometers, which is also associated with the single substitutional nitrogen. This should be expected from prior work of Professor Gali's group as well. This is interesting because if you recall, the experimental bands on the spectra, which could not be explained by the vacancy cluster model, were the 270, 350, and the 510 nanometer peaks or bands. It looks like two of those bands can be explained by the single substitutional nitrogen alone. Now, these configuration coordinate diagrams don't give us an estimate of the absorption line shape. So we have also done a calculation of the absorption spectra using a modified Beck-Johnson local density approximation for the substitutional nitrogen defect. The results look quite similar to the experimentally observed spectra. If we superimpose the excited state absorptions from the calculated configuration coordinate diagrams on this spectra, 
then the correspondence with the experimental data is quite remarkable. The only remaining band is the 510 nanometer, which is quite possible to explain if we consider the calculations of Professor Gali's group on the NVH defect. So what I'm trying to say is that the experimentally seen spectra of the as grown brown diamond can be reproduced by single substitutional nitrogen and NVH complexes without resorting to the vacancy cluster model. In other words, we just need to follow the surface thermodynamic calculations by Feng and find the optical behavior of each of those defects. The question which remains is what happens to these defects during subsequent heat treatments? Can we explain the disappearance of the brown color during heat treatment using the nitrogen-related point defect theory? The answer to this question uh, came to us through the calculation of the formation energies of the nitrogen and nitrogen-hydrogen complexes. We used spin polarized density functional theory and estimated the total energies at the GGA PBE level of theory. We modeled the nitrogen content as an adiabatic species as it cannot equilibrate with the surrounding nitrogen chemical potential during the heat treatments. And we considered hydrogen as a non-adiabatic species as it has a much higher mobility and likely to equilibrate with the surrounding environment. So, as proposed by the Yildiz Research Group in a recent publication, we have considered the binding energies and calculated the activity of each reactant defect in order to estimate their behavior during heat treatments by solving for charge neutrality and conservation of the nitrogen mass. Now, this is our result in this regard. We should remember that this plot is for defects in the bulk. But our initial calculation or the initial condition as calculated by Feng is actually mostly the C-center and the NBH complex defects. So our calculations show that as soon as these defects, which are formed on the surface and trapped in the bulk, are at high enough temperature to become sufficiently mobile, the concentration of the C defect should fall exponentially, and the NVH defects should also anneal out as well. So it is quite reasonable to expect the disappearance of the brown color as a result of heat treatments if the main cause are the C defect the C center or the NBH defect complexes. Now, it is also known from heat treatment experiments that these defects anneal out at high enough temperatures. So our calculations in this regard are consistent with the literature. Now, predicting defect equilibria during heat treatment is another major topic in itself. So I will not go further into this topic here. And uh, for researchers interested on this very exciting journey, please follow our publications in the spring of 2022 on defect thermodynamics of nitrogen, hydrogen, and silicon dope diamond. As in, uh, we are in the process of publishing a detailed paper in this regard. For the time being, the good news is that if we assume nitrogen-related defects are responsible for this mysterious brown color, we can definitely explain why their color disappears through subsequent heat treatments. So what's next? How can we give the final verdict in this regard? There is another amazing paper by Professor Zaitsev, who we have become quite fond of, uh, where they have found a direct correlation between the intensity of brown color and the luminescence of 468 nanometers. They have even called it the luminescence of the brown CVD diamond. It is essential to investigate nitrogen vacancy hydrogen complexes to search for the luminescence using hybrid functional calculations. It seems like a deeper look into the thermodynamically stable nitrogen-related defects on hydrogen-terminated surfaces in diamond can lead to a final verdict on the cause of the brown color in as grown CVD diamond. The key is finding which defect is responsible for the 468 nanometer luminescence using state-of-the-art quantum mechanical modeling. To conclude my presentation, just a quick recap. There are two main theories regarding the cause of the brown color in as grown CVD diamond, the vacancy cluster, and the nitrogen-related point defects. We applied spin-polarized HSE calculations on single substitutional nitrogen and found that two main bands in the spectra can be explained by this defect. And the subsequent absorption spectrum calculations using the same, for the same defect using MBJ LDA functional uh, can give a very similar line shape to that reported by the experimental studies. We also computed the defect equilibria during heat treatment, and it turns out that such defects must diminish during heat treatment. So it is possible to explain why such colors uh, completely disappear during heat treatments. We have concluded that the second theory has great merits, and if someone can find a nitrogen-related defect responsible for the 468 nanometer luminescence, then uh, it is possible to have the final verdict on this matter. 
I would like to thank everyone who has been part of the study. Professor Ugen has been our senior scientific advisor and specialist on CVD diamond growth. Professor Er has advised us on the semiconductor physics. Professor Kazmanli on the materials physics. Uh, Professor Solak, our thermodynamics advisor. And uh, we have also had the great pleasure of working with Professor Chelle from Institute of Theoretical Physics at the University of Warsaw. I also appreciate the insights of my dear sisters, Mehia and Mariam, and our dear friends, uh, Nargis, Betul, Amar, and Ahmed here at Stom Technical University. Uh, we are grateful for the fruitful communications with Mark Turiansky at the Wonderwall Research Group, and I also thank Wilmot van der Giesen for providing the artwork for our graphical abstract. Uh, this work would not have been possible without the supercomputer support of the High Performance Computing Center of the Republic of Turkey, UHEM, and uh, we truly appreciate their grant for this research. I look forward to your comments, suggestions, and also would love to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for listening.